Tobin here. We're going to start today's podcast. We'll recap the action from the third fight card in eight days from Jacksonville, Florida, as the Sunshine State hosted the UFC during this pandemic for the latest uh, for this run during COVID-19. And uh, this one was one that was headlined by the heavyweights. Walt Big Ticket Harris was taking on the Ream, Alistair Overeem. And a uh, hell of a fight, man. I tell you one thing. This has been... Uh, you've seen a lot of a lot of big fights here, especially these last two main events that have started one way and, and really tapered the other way as far as guys being able to come back. Um, their fortitude has been crazy because I thought I thought Alistair Overeem was done, especially the way that Alistair has been finished lately. I thought that uh, that Walt Harris got him and I, I, I thought no shot that he was coming back from it. So um, you know, it kind of speaks to both of them. Walt was in the you know, first of all, was dealing with a tragedy with with crazy emotion, all that type of stuff, and then you think about on top of that was coming back, um, you know, in the midst of a pandemic was in the first time he was in a uh, a main event spot, so it was a big it was a big time step up for him, and I think this is going to be a big time growing experience. But Alistair Overeem ended up getting the win over him uh, with a with a with a with a second round TKO. So um, look impressive performance from Alistair Overeem, who I think definitely needed that win. You think about where he's been recently as far as his uh, his record's concerned. Um, you know, losing to Francis Ngannou and Curtis Blades, the guys who are kind of up top of the division right now. Uh, he had a, a real bad strike of luck with uh, with Jarzinho Rosenstrike, where he was winning the fight. It wasn't the best performance in the world, but... Uh, he ended up getting his face blown up by Rosenstrike with five seconds left in the bout. So that that really sucks for him. So a good win for him, a top 10 win, one that he certainly needed. And uh, as for Walt Harris, look, you know, uh, you just hope that this uh, this does anything to help heal what he went through. It's unspeakable what he went through. And um, I think a lot of people got to to know his name and 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 hopefully his stepdaughter is able to to be honored in some way by everybody knowing what happened to her and and he was able to you know he brought the t-shirt to the to the octagon which was super emotional um it was a it was it was a, a really really good bout by him and uh he had him look he had Overeem uh, it's just you know these are one of those things where you see what what the heavyweight division is some guys take a step back and then they 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 take a launch forward i think for Walt he definitely can do that you know this is a this is just a minor blip and you know we're talking a guy who's you know is is not young but is is at least you know now at this new spot I think you know showed a lot of people what he's made of in as far as talent's concerned and I think uh his explosiveness looked in really good shape I thought um but I don't but 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 just needs uh you know just just needs to to go back to the drawing board a little bit um as far as the other, you know, the, the, I think the big story of this night, other than the main event, a lot of questionable decisions, not a great day for Florida judging, not a great day for Florida judging, which is disappointing for me because, um, you know, you know, I'd love to see more action come here. And I do think more action is going to come here, especially with the fact that Florida was kind of a, uh, a safety net for the UFC. Um, I do think that we're going to be in a position to get a lot of fights from here on out. I think that Dana White will probably remember what Florida did for him in a, in a pandemic. And so I do think that that put this place in a good spot to get big time events. Um, but it wasn't a great show and a, a lot of, a lot of questionable decisions. Uh, Angela Hill and Claudia Gadelia. I thought Angela Hill got the nod. I thought she should have gotten the nod from, from my standpoint, uh, Ige versus Barboza. I'm a Barboza guy, so maybe I'm a little bit biased in that. I thought he should have gotten the nod. Uh, Song Yandong against uh, uh, Song Yandong against Marlon Vera. Marlon Vera probably got the biggest hose job of the night. He definitely deserved to win that fight over over Yandong. So those uh, those were tough. I think that was definitely the big story as far as this was concerned. Uh, that the judging was really questionable. Uh, Gadelia versus Angela Hill. Look, it was a, a hell of a throwdown. Those those ladies drew uh, a crazy amount of shots, um, and I feel for Angela Hill because you know Angela Hill has been so damn active and she's been really good too. You know, for 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 somebody who's been, um, you know, really kind of worked her way back into this into this UFC thing. You know, she really 
um, has done a hell of a job with her career. So I hate to see her take an L like that because she's, you know, one of the more active fighters on the roster, really. And so that one hurts a little bit. And same thing with our with Barboza. Like I, 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 it it stinks that you know these guys rack up you know, these losing streaks or they, they rack up a few losses and you think about, yeah, but look at, look at where Barboza has been. He's lost split decisions to Ige and Paul Felder. And they really very arguably could have gone his way. Um, so it sucks for him. It sucks that you like, if you just look at it on paper, you go to his, his, uh, his Wikipedia or his sure dog or his topology. And you just see those three straight L's. It sucks for Barboza that he's in that position, but uh, I thought he looked good. I thought he looked good for 145 uh, in his featherweight debut. Um, didn't you know? I don't know how hard that was for him. I imagine it was very difficult for him to do that at uh, at this point in his career. But uh, he was one of those guys. I thought it didn't look like the uh, the weight cut was wearing on him. I thought he looked pretty damn good uh, in his performance. Um, Christoph Jago versus Eric Anders. Eric Anders. Star- story of this fight was Eric Anders mullet. It's glorious. Uh, it's like, a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like beautiful, breathtaking, feathery waves in the air. I, I just, I loved it. Um, but Jocko, uh, ended up getting the better of him on that one. Um, I really, is this what we had? I mean, the performances of the night, you had some, uh, really great starts to the, to the, to the card. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, Nascimento with his, with his, uh, submission win, um, that was very impressive. Courtney Casey with a nasty arm bar over Mara Romero Borella. She, uh, she, I mean, that, that looked super gross what she was doing to her. Nate Ladware with, uh, his win over Darren Elkins. Um, you know, Darren Elkins wore it like his tattoo says, man. The dude has the damaged tattooed across his chest and, and Ledware just put it on him. A uh, very bloody fight. Darren Elkins obviously been in a ton of wars in his career, so he wears it. Uh, a little bit tough as far as that stuff is concerned. Um, uh, Giga Jacquesi with his win over Erwin Rivera. That was a fun fight. Those guys were throwing some some crazy, crazy. Uh, it was it was a real mismatch as far as like at featherweight. You know, Giga was just a lot bigger than Rivera, but it it really made for a fun fight. Those guys were throwing some some cool Bruce Lee stuff. You know, it's funny they were throwing during the uh, during the fight. Uh, they were advertising a lot. Be water. They're the the Bruce Lee thirty for thirty that's coming out in a couple weeks, and uh, I think these guys did like probably the best of honoring Bruce Lee. Um, in my mind, you know, I know fight of the night went to Yudon versus Vera, but in my mind, I thought the fight of the night went to our guy Miguel Baeza, his win over Matt Brown, um, because that that first round was crazy. I mean, that went. It looked like uh, it looked like Baeza was done. It looked like that Matt Brown was going to put it on him. He started hitting him with the elbows. Just looked a lot. You could tell. I think there were some nerves for for Baeza early on, and he mentioned some of that where he like he just saw across the cage and it was like oh, you know, like I'm a, I'm a real I'm really here against a recognizable name in Matt Brown. And when we spoke to him back in January, he knew what that meant as far as you know taking on a guy of his caliber. You're taking on the immortal. This is the the guy with the elbow. He's a vicious, vicious fighter, and it's a big step up. You know, it's it's kind of a throw you into the deep end, kids. See where you're at, and it's not it's not one of these wins where you're like, whoa. I mean that that shows he's a contender or anything like that. But I definitely think it shows like the dude is UFC game, and you know sometimes these young prospects get into the UFC and everything is just super easy for them. And I think it's good for, for Miguel that he is, he came in and he had a really, really tough go of it with Matt Brown early on. Matt Brown uh, was a lot more relaxed with his striking. You could tell Miguel was pressing a little bit. He, uh, he found his, he, you know, he found his chin early, but the big swing in this honestly is when he pressed him up against the cage, Miguel lost his mouthpiece. His mouthpiece was shot out. I don't know. You know, I don't know if it was a case where it just got knocked out or if he spit it out uh, out of a little bit of veteran savvy from the young buck. But the not, the mouthpiece, I think it just got knocked out straight out. And, you know, so he he weathered the storm a little bit from Matt Brown. They got a little bit of a a, a pace on it. Ref uh, stops the fight. Herzog stops the fight. And uh, gives Maeza back his mouthpiece. And he's reset. He's He's back focused. He's ready to go. 
and he uh, he finds Matt Brown's temple, immediately puts him on the canvas, starts with a little bit of ground and pound, uh, goes after him in, the, in that regard, but also didn't want to get caught by anything stupid, it looked like. Uh, but he completely swung that swung that round back to him, you know. So um, it was a it was a really really great bounce back for the young for the young end from Davy, and then Caramel Thunder comes out in the second round and he hits him with this nasty left hook that puts Matt Brown out. Couple follow up shots and that's all she wrote. So Miguel Baeza gets himself a huge knockout win over Matt Brown. Got himself a $50,000 bonus, which I'm sure is very sweet for a guy at his point in his career. So really good for Miguel getting that. Um, and, yeah, I think the UFC's got one in him. They look like they got themselves a hell of a prospect at welterweight. Uh, didn't call anybody out. You know, says he's ready to roll on and move on to the next one, whoever it is. I hope that, uh, you know, maybe they give him something either just outside the rankings or, or just inside the rankings next to, to wet his whistle in that regards. But, look, this just continues to show – uh, the kind of talent we have down here in South Florida that we continue to showcase. And uh, he was a very confident young man when we spoke to him. He seemed, uh, you know, a, a point where he was, you know, like many of these guys was questioning whether he should continue on with it, should he give up. But uh, I tell you what, man, he looks like he's got the whole package. He was very, uh, he was very, very, uh, he was he was just very, very uh, well-tempered in the whole fight, you know. To, to take that kind of a, a, a beating early on, a lot of people could crumble, you know, um, no, you know, knowing what it took to take on a guy like Matt Brown with that kind of resume, with that many fights under his belt, you might just think, oh, maybe I'm just not, maybe I'm not cut out for this. And that was the opposite case. He was very cut out for it and it was a hell of a performance. So shout out to Caramel Thunder, Miguel Baeza for getting himself a win. That's our recap.